we found that at uh, an accretion rate, which is the Eddington value, m dot Eddington, that um, the accretion rate dm by dt is equal to some constant uh, times the mass of the black hole, and therefore dm is equal to this constant times the mass of the black hole times dt. We can use this to get a sense of the time scale to add a certain amount of mass to the black hole. So we have m, we integrate that, we have m equals constant times the mass of the black hole times the time. And so we can say the time to add a mass m to the black hole is that mass divided by a constant times the mass of the black hole. Um, so uh, it's not surprising that the greater m is, the greater the time, right? We need more time to add more mass. Um, but we know that, we also showed that at the Eddington accretion rate, uh, dA, the, the rate at which the uh, dimensionless black hole spin changes, A, is a constant. It's not, it's not a function of the mass of the black hole. Um, and so the mass that is added, let's say, depending on what value of spin we want to go to, let's say we start uh, at high spin, but we are counter-rotating, so we spin the black hole down, the mass added to the black hole um, can be written in terms of the mass of the black hole. So how much of the, how much mass is added to the black hole? It's some fraction of the mass of the black hole. Um, and so we can say that the time uh, necessary for that mass to be added ends up being this f over some constant, that's some number. Um, this is not a function of the mass of the black hole. Uh, so let's think of uh, a spin from close to about, close to minus one, right? Counter rotation all the way to uh, close to about plus one, about plus one, you can't actually get to one for the spin. Um, we can do this calculation. We can figure out what that time scale is. We want to sort of get an estimate for different time scales, but let's, let's sort of use a, a value. Well, this is really an approximation. If we're somewhat careful, we get 1.2 times 10 to the eight years to spin the black hole down and then all the way up again at the Eddington uh, rate. So we can sort of use this to get a sense of how long it takes to change the spin for some different range of values. So if we remember our plot for the angular momentum as a function of spin, right, so this is uh, counter rotation and we spin the black hole down to zero spin here, right? Zero spin is here, and then we spin it back up to um, the maximum value close to one. This is the angular momentum, the dimensionless uh, angular momentum scale to one for high uh, spin and counter rotation. And so we can sort of see that we are here above about 0.8, so I don't know what that is, 0.82, we can estimate that. We end up at point, I don't know, what is that, 0.3, something like that. So we can sort of say that the angular momentum, the dimensionless angular momentum, um, goes from 1 to 0.3 overall, and so that's a 0.7 value. And if we want to go from, and estimate, uh, that difference for counter rotation, we're going from one to about 0.2, we said, right? That's about uh, point, that's, well, it's, it's 0.18. And then from, from 0.82 to 0.3 would be co-rotation, and that's 
0.52. And so we can say that um, if we estimate the, the time it takes, if we know the t total time, then counter rotation takes about 0.8 over 0.7, right? That's the total range times 1.2 times 10 to the 8 years, um, <clears throat> which is about 3 times 10 to the 7 years, and 0.52 over 0.7 times 1.2 times 10 to the 8 years, which is um, about 8.9 times 10 to the 7 years. Um, but this assumes that the rate at which the angular momentum is supplied to the black hole is constant uh, in both counter-rotation and co-rotation, which is actually not the case because we know that when we are in counter-rotation, right, there's a greater amount of angular momentum given to the black hole from the innermost stable circular orbit. Right? So um, the time scale for this is actually shorter. There's less angular momentum being supplied in co-rotation, so this actually gets, takes longer. And so the time scale for counter-rotation from high spin to zero must be less than 3 times 10 to the 7 years, and it must therefore be greater uh, for the co-rotation uh, phase to spin the black hole up. So it turns out that in counter-rotation, we are really more about, um, so this, let's say T, let's see, T uh, counter, counter-rotation is about uh, 8 times 10 to the 6 years, right? So this is independent of the mass of the black hole, any black hole that has high spin, you know, um, the, the highest spin that it can have, that is spinning down at the Eddington accretion rate, will roughly have, will, will roughly take eight times ten to the six years, and then uh, T uh, co rotation will be um, whatever's whatever's left over. Um, so it'll be greater than this. What, what is that? One point something, 1.1 times 10 to the eight years, something like that. Um, so if we have uh, a system that is uh, counter-rotating, we have this time scale, right? At the, at, the, at the maximum, if we allow, if we insist that the Eddington accre accretion rate is the maximum rate at which we can feed the black hole, then this is the time scale for spinning the black hole down. We can increase this time scale if we lower the accretion rate, but we can't uh, lower the time scale further um, if we insist that the accretion rate, the maximum accretion rate is the Eddington accretion rate. And so we'll use these time scales to uh, apply uh, to, to look at observations, to, to create a model to then uh, look at the observations.